All right, looks like we've got a good crowd in the room. So thank you everybody so much for joining us here this morning or this afternoon, depending where you are in the world, um, as we launch Relative Insight Heartbeat, which is our newest platform module. By way of a brief introduction, my name is David Koch. I am the Senior Audience Marketing Manager here at Relative Insight. Um, and I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, Amy Baker, our Senior Director of Customer Innovation. And together, we're gonna to be taking you through all the things that you need to know about Heartbeat today. As a reminder, if you are in the room and you're a current customer of Relative Insight, we will be doing a raffle um, to win a free year subscription to Heartbeat. Uh, so if you have any colleagues who might be interested uh, in attending this call. Um, it is one entry per person, not one entry per customer. So please do pass along the link to anybody else uh, who might wanna hop on the call as we go through here today. So with that out of the way, um, in terms of how we're gonna run this session, I'm gonna start off talking a little bit about what Heartbeat is, how it's different from, but complements the relative insight that you've come to know and love, and we're gonna introduce some of the core use cases that we've seen with our early adopters. Then I'm gonna pass it over to Amy, who's gonna take us into the platform to demonstrate uh, Heartbeat in action. And we're gonna finish off with a Q&A session and there's gonna be two components to this. We're gonna start off uh, with a special guest, Jake McCaddy from Oomph Agency, who's gonna be talking with Amy a little bit about their plans for using Heartbeat. And then we're gonna open it up to questions from the floor. So please do submit your questions using the Q&A here in Zoom. Uh, and we'll save plenty of time to get through those at the end of the session today. So getting into it, I guess the most logical starting point here is to talk about what exactly Heartbeat is and what it does. And Heartbeat is a time-based visualization tool for monitoring the things that you care about most in topical online conversations and customer feedback. What Heartbeat does is it provides you an objective view into how bespoke user-defined themes are changing over time in your customer feedback and target audience conversations. And these changes are visualized in what we call Heartbeat charts. And that is what you're seeing up here on the left of the screen. These are easy to understand graphs that help you monitor trends, identify opportunities, and assess the impact of initiatives without actually having to get in and read through all of that data. So what does this mean for the relative insight that you know and love? So what you previously was just called relative insight is now called relative insight explore. And We've designed Explore and Heartbeat to function together and independently. And we're going to showcase both approaches as we go through the session here today. So starting with Explore. Explore is a discovery-based research tool that uses comparison to reveal the things that make target audiences, customer segments, and brands unique and similar from one another. And with Explore, this is what you've come to know and love. And what it does is it reveals to you the detail in your, in your data set, and it helps you tease out specific, actionable, language-based insights to inform marketing communications, product development, customer service strategy, or whatever else it may be. And Explore really helps you zoom in to that detail and tease out the important differences and similarities. But in terms of working together with Heartbeat, Explore also can help you reveal what's important to understand in your data and, and, and help you understand what it is that you want to track on an ongoing basis using Heartbeat. So for example, you may have created a comparison using Explore, looking at how Americans and Brits differ when talking about travel. Your comparison might have revealed to you that Brits are more likely to talk about beach vacations, whereas Americans are more likely to talk about cruise vacations. Both of these things stand out to you as potentially interesting. So you group the related words and topics into themes that you can then track across the broader public discourse around travel. So in this sense, Explore is helping you uncover 
what it is in your data that's worth tracking on an ongoing basis. So if Explore is a tool for really zooming in to your data, Heartbeat is a tool for zooming out and getting a top level aerial view of the composition of customer feedback and topical conversations over time. It's gonna help you understand not only how those themes are changing, but how those themes relate to one another. And then Heartbeat also allows you to investigate changes further. And there's two ways you can do this really. One is by getting into more granular detail with daily, weekly, and monthly views of your data. And the other is to go in and use Explore to further interrogate a, a particular change that has sparked your interest. So for example, you see a particular theme, maybe you see mentions of cruises really spiking um, in a particular time period in, in the fall months. And you wanna understand that more so you can isolate data from that time period, compare it against the other time periods to then understand what's really contributing to that change in conversation. So here we've looked at how Explore can help you get into the detail and help you understand what it is you wanna track. You can then take that into Heartbeat get that top level view using your heartbeat charts. And then you can go back to explore to really investigate and interrogate a particular change if you're interested in doing so. Now, heartbeat is a user driven innovation. This is something that was developed coming out of conversations with you. And it became really clear to us that there was a need to understand how important parts of target audience and customer conversations are changing, but that it's not always practical to get into the details and actually read through the masses of data that are being created. So we went out and build, built a solution to do exactly that. And what Heartbeat really enables you to do is first and foremost, it gives you a view into what's changing with very little user effort. So you don't need to have anybody go in and read that data. All you need to do is feed it into the platform and you're gonna see how the things you care about have changed. The second thing Heartbeat is gonna help you do is investigate trends and distinguish between emerging trends, receding trends, consistent issues and flashpoint problems. And what this really helps you do among other things is overcome recency bias. And this is something that happens when you know, any kind of analysis is done manually. We have a tendency to focus on the things that we've read most recently and inflate the importance of those particular issues. When in reality, it might just be a flashpoint, right? Maybe people are, you know, complaining about the store experience this month, but you know, it's back down to normal levels next month and it was just fine before. So it's not the structural problem uh, that maybe you thought it was and it doesn't necessarily require a huge amount of resource or attention paid to it. So in this sense, Heartbeat's gonna help you focus on the things that are most impactful to your business. And third, Heartbeat is a great tool for assessing and quantifying the impact of campaigns, product improvements, and other strategic initiatives. So as a time-based tracking tool, you're, you can imagine that it's gonna be easy to plot the particular date the change was made. For example, you improve the formulation of your product and you're expecting to see that uh, contribute to a, an increase in the mentions of good quality in customer feedback. So you look at that date and you look to see if the theme you've defined comprising words and topics relating to good quality is trending in a positive direction. And that allows you to uh, assertively quantify the impact of what you've done in a way that was traditionally very difficult and often relied on anecdotes and sort of gut feel um, to do in, in a systematic way. So how does Heartbeat actually work? And as Amy is going to demonstrate, setting up a Heartbeat chart is simple and efficient. And the idea is that once you set it up, you can use it forever to stay on top of the conversations that you care about. And it all starts with defining the themes that you want to track. So these are collections of topics, words, grammar, and emotions um, that relate to the things that you care about to your core priorities. And as we've talked about, this can be done in two ways. One is by using Explore, 
creating a comparison that reveals to you things that are important in your data that you then wanna track over time. But we do recognize that in other cases, you may already have a good idea of what it is you want to track, right? Based on your existing knowledge, the existing research that you've done. So there is also the option to explicitly tell the platform what it is you want to track. And really this step of defining themes, this is where the work lies. And once you've done that, it's about uploading your time series data, applying the themes to that data to create your heartbeat charts, and then using those heartbeat charts to visualize the changes, uh, visualize changes in the prevalence of your themes over time. Now, essentially what we're saying here is that there is a huge amount of data, whether that be customer feedback, you know, topical online conversations that is relevant to your business. But we live in the information age and the capacity to analyze all of that data in great detail is often not there, right? We're often overwhelmed by the amount of data being created. So what we're saying here is use themes to define the things you care about most, the things that are most directly related to your goals, your objectives, your priorities, and then apply that on top of, of your data. And you're gonna be able to see the things that matter um, and be alerted to things that are relevant for your business without having to ever get into the detail of that data. Now, the fourth step here is about using Heartbeat as a tool for always on business intelligence. And this is one of the big trends that we're seeing from our customers in the analytics and insights space is this desire to get away from ad hoc analysis. Um, because that's the way that a lot of text ana analysis work is still being done on an ad hoc basis. But we want to enable you with something that you can simply add in the most recent month of survey responses or the most recent month of forum discussions that are relevant to your business. Um, add those into your heartbeat chart and see how those trends are continuing over time. So making it really low effort, but really useful uh, and embed that as part of your you know, weekly, monthly, quarterly reporting or whatever it may be. So before I hand it over to Amy to take us into the platform, I'm gonna introduce two of the core use cases that we're seeing so far with our early adopters. Now, these are by no means um, the only things you can do with Heartbeat, but they are certainly the most common things that we've seen so far. And the first is customer feedback analysis. So this is all about identifying trends and changes in customer feedback, whether that's from survey open ends, reviews, social media brand mentions. And the idea here is that there's gonna be certain things that you want to look for in your customer feedback, right? Your top priorities may be, you know, ensuring, you know, good perception of value, you know, product quality, store experience, maybe if you're a retailer, you could define themes relating to each of those priorities, apply them on top of this data, uh, and then track how you're performing against those. The second really common use case we're seeing so far is around trend spotting. So this is looking at public discourse, online conversations um, about a particular industry product or product category that's gonna be relevant to your business. Uh, and the example that I'll use here is that, you know, if you're an elect electric vehicle manufacturer, you likely have a vested interest in understanding how the public discourse about electric vehicles is changing over time. You might define a theme relating to battery life, affordability, um, you know, uh, performance, all these sorts of things. And by applying those themes on top of all this open source data, you're gonna be able to keep a pulse on public opinion and sentiment about your product category that you're trying to compete in. So those are the two core use cases. And now I'm going to pass it over to Amy, who's gonna take us into the platform uh, to show you what this actually all looks like in practice. Brilliant. Thank you, David. Um, before I share my screen, just a couple of, of shout outs. Um, firstly, shout out to our amazing product team who have worked tirelessly to make this product so brilliant. And secondly, to our beta customers whose feedback has been kind of instrumental um, in, in the creation of this. So I'm going to share my screen. And here we have um, relative insight explore. So hopefully a space that you guys are all very familiar with. 
I'm going to show you two examples of heartbeat in action today um, to address those two core use cases that David mentioned. So firstly, a trends piece. So uh, we worked with an electric car manufacturer who wanted to understand the evolution of the customer conversation around electric cars. And secondly, a survey example that's come from a, a retailer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start in this project here. Now, as I mentioned, le electric car manufacturer who wanted to understand how the conversation had changed over the course of 2020, 2021. So what they did was they ran a comparison comparing the first half of 2021 to the second half. And we can see that here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into that comparison and we can start to see the insights that they spotted uh, in that data. So for the first half, there was this question of affordability, um, people not being able to afford electric vehicles despite wanting to. And secondly, confusion, um, confusion from people around the high end spec, the supply chain, and also the differences between hybrid and electric. In the second half of the year, we saw um, a doubling down of this affordability issue with um, the conversation changing to people explicitly stating that electric vehicles are only for the rich, wealthy and affluent, not for the everyday household. And also a, a real questioning around the sourcing of materials and the extent to which that was truly sustainable um, and, and renewable uh, as, as the benefits of electric vehicles are usually positioned. So they wanted to have a look at how these themes had evolved over the course of 2021. So what they did is they started an explore and they started to build their themes. So if we click start here, we can type in electric vehicles here, create. And what we can start to do is quickly and easily drag and drop those words that, we, um, that are relevant to the themes that we want to track. So we know that affordability was one of those key issues in the first half of 2021. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag all of these relevant words across into this side panel here. Once we've got all of those words in there, what we're gonna do is we're going to bundle those together into a theme of affordability like that. Really quick, really easy. And we're gonna add those into that theme as well. That's our first theme done already. The other issue that in the first half of 2021 was this issue of confusion and not understanding. So again, we're gonna create a theme around that so we can see how that evolves over the year. What's great about this is we can include emojis as part of themes. So I'm gonna take that little confused guy there, put him in a theme and take out all these across and I'm gonna do the same thing, bundle those together into a theme and we're gonna call that this one, confusion. Confirm that there and drag these into, into that theme as well. Then we're gonna flip over into the other side of the comparison and we're gonna create those themes that we saw in the second half of the year. This time um, we wanted to include uh, this, this supply chain issue, which we can see here. So this was that doubling down, that real questioning of the, uh, the, the components of electric vehicles. So in particular, lithium mining um, was something that, that uh, people were questioning. So we're going to create a theme around that and we're going to call that supply chain. Just like that. And then the last one was around this issue of affluence. So people explicitly saying electric vehicles are not for me, therefore the, the rich and the wealthy. Um, and here we can see that all of these words are actually really relevant to that, that theme. So rather than dragging them over individually, what we're going to do is just drag that whole topic over there. So there we have it, our four themes, um, and we're going to create our heartbeat chart. Click that button there, um, and this launches uh, this panel here. This just gives you the chance to name your chart, give it a description, check that the data is correct. So we've got the first and second half of 2021 there. We're gonna select our theme, which is electric vehicles. Click create heartbeat chart, and that will then generate this, this visualization here. So down the side, you can see all of your key themes there. What you're seeing now is two axes. So the axis along the bottom here, the x-axis, that is time. Um, and the time span is not dictated by us, by heartbeat, but rather the data that you have. So if you have 10 years worth of data and you want to visualize all of that, absolutely. Um, 
you, you'll see that there on the x-axis. The y-axis here is message percentage. Um, so that's a slightly different metric to that that we use and explore, but we think it's super helpful here. For example, here we can see that this is supply chain. We can see that by the, the green box there. And what that's saying is in the second week of August, 10% of uh, the tweets that mentioned electric vehicles also mentioned mining and lithium. So 10% there in August. What we can then do on this, uh, on this chart, and we're, at the moment we're, we're looking at a weekly view, um, which is great for those, those more, that more detailed view. But actually, if you're more interested in trends, monthly is probably better. So we'll switch into a monthly kind of bucket. And what you can do here is, is, is turn these things on and off. And what that will do is adjust the chart to uh, reflect the data that it's demonstrating. Now, what was really interesting for our customer was that this topic of affordability was indeed trending downwards. You know, they'd found it was over-indexing in the first half of the year. But actually what they were really interested in was this emerging trend of this explicit calling out of, of affluence and electric vehicles only being for the rich. So what this really is, is, is kind of an example of sort of linguistic replacement where conceptually they're talking about um, the same thing, but they're just using slightly different words and phrases to talk about it. So what I'm now gonna do is switch over into another heartbeat, this time for customer feedback. Um, and this came from a, a survey by a US retailer. And we've got the themes already be built out here. Um, so we've got uh, themes of staff complaints, brand detractors, delivery problems, staff praise, um, mentions of fair pricing. But what our customer was really interested in here um, were some initiatives that they were running with their customer service team. So they'd had an increase in um, staff complaints and, and wanted to address that in-store experience for customers. So what they started to do is, is, is put their feedback into Heartbeat and analyze that over time. And what they could see was that um, there were some, you know, they started these, these interventions early 2021 and there was some initial improvement. So an increase in, in positive mentions of staff. So things like helpful, amazing, excellent, friendly, awesome. Um, and they saw a decrease in, in staff complaints, which covers irresponsible, careless, negligent, useless. Um, but what they were able to see by looking at this over time is actually these improvements were fairly short lived. And that tied in directly with the, the length of these initiatives that they were putting in with their staff. So they'd put this initiative in and then they'd stop and, and then it would go back down again. They'd put another one in and it would go up. Um, and, and that cycle just uh, carried on throughout the year. And the only way they knew this was by looking at this data on a yearly basis and not just looking as David mentioned at the last month or two months. Um, so what they learned from this is actually short-term initiatives with, with staff um, doesn't work it needed a long-term kind of more sustained sort of always on initiative to keep that customer care and that kind of um, staff praise high from customers. That is Heartbeat. Um, so with that, I'm actually going to introduce you all to Jake. Jake, Jake is um, head of client success at Oomph. Um, UMF is an agency that creates and implements transformative, um, transformative customer experience programs. Sorry, they combine a need state first approach with behavior change principles to help organizations embrace and implement CX strategies, tactics, and interventions in effective and innovative ways. Clients are a real mixed bunch and include everything from Mercedes Benz. The Saudi Arabian government as part of their 2030 vision and the National Association of Retired Police Officers. So welcome, Jake. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really, really appreciate it. There are a couple of questions that we're hoping you're gonna, gonna answer for us, Jake. Um, firstly, what excites you the most about the Heartbeat product? And secondly, how do you plan to make it actionable? Great, fantastic. So I'll start question one. Makes sense. Um, so hi guys, like Amy said, uh, UMF delivers CX strategy and implementation program for a myriad of clients. Um, at the core of our client engagements is actionable and insightful customer data. So historic, new, anywhere in between, we use it to inform our planning processes and to track success for our clients over time on pretty much every project I think that I've, I've certainly worked on in my five years at UMF. 
Um, relative insight is a key part of that process. So for quantitative data, we have a core and highly skilled team who can easily use tools like Power BI and Tableau to effectively produce reports in cross tabs, push them into a preset visual style review and go. But the qualitative data has always required more heavy lifting on our side to really get to the crux of the insights. So the right analyst with the right experience and the right mindset, sometimes specific to that industry, that country and that product. Using Relative's platform, we've been able to give our whole planning analysis department the ability to dive into and derive insights from pre-prepared, unbiased and informative views on qualitative data at the click of a button or two. Uh, this has massively helped speed up our end-to-end -end research analysis processes. The quality of data presentation is key to us and its accessibility is a massive contributing factor. It makes qualitative data themes understandable to as many stakeholders as we can throw at it. So what excites me about Heartbeat in this context is that we're fast paced and so our internal team members who may specialise in discipline X or who want to contribute to project Y or Z, it gives them the platform to be able to bring their own unique perspectives to our programme and project planning processes. As Amy showed you in the demo, Heartbeat will give us the platform for even more of my clients, colleagues and collaborators to explore and track qualitative themes in a common visual language, allowing us to bring a different perspective to the traditional qual analysis processes for the benefit of our agency and most importantly, our clients. Um, and from my perspective, that's probably the perfect segue to the main reason I'm excited about Heartbeat. Our clients will often be on a similar journey to those we prepare and deliver into the market, um, CX programs into the market for them. Like their customers or members, they'll experience behavior change as part of the development and delivery of a customer experience first program of work with their colleagues, with their suppliers and in themselves. If you're used to promoting products or services as the sole solution and your data is telling you that your customers would respond better, buy more often, be happier if you put their needs and concerns first, the things and themes they care and talk about ahead of your product specification or member proposition, it can be a really tricky transition. Relative Insights Heartbeat products will give us the platform to help monitor behavior change in their prospect and customer base and within their organization. It will be a lens through which to see the change from then and into the now. Bring it to life with a level of ease and efficiency that we've not seen before. How sales teams are changing their approaches, how marketing communications departments are embracing a new customer first tone of voice, how customers are talking about the brand on social media, all for profitable results and more meaningful customer relationships. Wrapped up in a visually led style, it's easy to set up and present in, the, in an amazing qualitative analysis platform. There's real power in making the complex simple and no simpler, especially from a CX perspective, as it's hard to make things simple. The second question Amy asked was how we plan to make it actionable. So for us in the first instance, it's all about seeing the implementation of the do's and don'ts when it comes to putting the needs of customers first in selling and in support. A new CX approach to tone of voice, leading for the need and not product, etc. I can see this manifesting itself in a raft of different ways from. So we've got monitoring of sales scripts, call data with our automotive clients to see how sales leads and dealerships are changing their approaches to prospects and customers, analyzing customer support conversation records to see how their processes are changing in line with behavior change principles, seeing how customers are thinking and talking differently about the organization, their brand and products and social channels to track the impact, impact sorry, of our clients taking a CX first approach. Uh, one of the membership organizations we work with uh, is a massive proponent of digital communities. So traditionally their KPIs for success are around members contacted, members joining, active members, etc. But they don't look at, or should I say they can't currently see, the value that can be derived from understanding the changing topics, trends and themes that matter to their members in an easily accessible way. This will allow them to create and mediate new topics and forums in a way that matters to their members during the event instead of waiting for an end of month or an end of quarter review. So we're building into our client program proposals, uh, heart, uh, relative insights heartbeat product as a core element of reporting KPI reporting. It can be implemented at any stage of those engagements, set up at the start of the project to start validating hypotheses around customer needs and characteristics, adding additional themes and data as the program progresses, and to start to see how the dial is changing as more and more CX interventions and tactics are being delivered. Our relative insight explore clients have responded really well to the principles of and the proposition for heartbeat and we look forward to implementing them soon so yeah so just in a summary our experience of relative insights explore platform has been widely well received by all of our clients so far and it's sped up so many of our internal processes driving efficiencies and better engagements and i said to the guys uh, just before joining the webinar this morning that our, our first actual hard sell, if you will, of the um, the Heartbeat platform happened straight after this call. So I do apologize for rattling through. I've got that in my mind as well. But thank you for the time to, um, to share that with you today.
Brilliant. Thank you, Jake. I think that the words that stood out to me there were ease, impact, and my favorite one, which is CX. You know, I've got a, a soft spot for anything CX. So I'm um, delighted to hear um, that it will be, you know, put straight to work. Um, and good luck for your call this afternoon. I know that's Appreciate kind of it. a big one. Um, thank you, Jake. Again, um, David, back to you. Wonderful. Um, thank you for that, Amy and Jake. Um, for all of you on the line who might have questions, if you haven't already submitted them in through the Q&A function, please do so. Uh, we've got a good, uh, good few to get us started here. Um, so Amy, one of the questions that, that's come up a few times already today is around how does Heartbeat differ from the tracking capabilities that people might be familiar with in social listening tools like Brandwatch or Meltwater? Yep, great question. So I think there are three key aspects to be aware of um, with Heartbeat. The first one is that it can analyze any form of digital text. So just like Explore, that digital text can come from any source. That might be online, offline. It might be social, forums, blogs, product reviews. It might be emails. It might be documents. It might be news. You know, the list goes on and on and on. So it's not tied to any set source list. It could really, really be anything. The second aspect is um, that we really, really wanna stay true to this idea of comparison that you guys will be familiar with from Explore. What Heartbeat enables you to do is not just look at changes over time. So how is a theme um, increasing or decreasing over time, but also how does a theme sit in relation to other relevant themes. So a spike in, in one theme is only really interesting if none of the other themes have simultaneously spiked. With things like more frequency, for example, a, a spike could just be an, a, a general increase in, in, in conversation for that month, for example. The third, um, and I, I, I'd argue the most powerful reason, is the seamless integration with the Explore product. One of the, the key issues that, that our customers have reported to us with social listening tools is you need to know what you're looking for in order to find it. You have to craft Boolean. Um, it can be quite complex. You need to know what to include, what to exclude. With Explore, as you've seen, those linguistic elements of importance will be surfaced to you and they will already be semantically tagged. So it really is a, just a simple case, as I just demonstrated, of dragging and dropping and crafting those bespoke themes um, in order to track them over time. Wonderful. Um, thank you for that, Amy. I think you positioned that beautifully. Um, so the next question here relates to the message frequency value. So that y-axis on the heartbeat chart. Um, that you were showing us earlier. Can you just go into a little bit more detail about how that message frequency value is, is determined? Absolutely. So message percentage, um, it's probably easier if I use an example. So for example, if you'd conducted a, a survey and you had a hundred uh, customer verbatim or uh, responses, 10 of those mentioned quality and you had a theme of quality, the data point on your chart would be 10% because it is 10 of 100. Perfect, thank you for that. Um, and the question here from Jessica um, is about, does Relative Insight have a library or a resource offering of where to source data from? Absolutely, I think the best uh, advice for that is to, to get in touch with your account manager. They really, really are the experts in where to source the most, uh, the, the best quality and the most relevant data for your project. Um, at last count, I think we have something like 300 scrapers already built for publicly available online data. Um, but that's only because those are the ones that we've needed so far, right? You know, we have the capability in-house to, to source more. So if you have a project in mind, please do get in touch with your account manager who will, who will be able to help you with, with specific sources. I think, yeah, I think that's a great point, Amy. And I think the, the message to take there is that, um, you know, there's no sort of one answer uh, and it'll really depend on sort of the, the nitty gritty details of what it is you're trying to learn about um, what'll be best. So um, lots of, we have lots of resources to, to help you with that. Um, the next question is about 
really it, it, it's, it's about interrogating a particular change. So what can people do to really get into the detail of a particular you know, change, spike or trend that they spot using the heartbeat charts? Absolutely. So this is where the partnership with Explore comes into its own. So for example, if you'd seen a spike in July around a particular theme um, and you weren't sure why, what we'd recommend is isolating that month using the explore methodology that we know you're all familiar with. Compare that to the rest of your data um, and what explore will surface to you are the significant differences in that month um, and you'll be able to get kind of much more detail on the context around that spike. Wonderful. Um, thank you. Uh, and we've got a, a question in here from Natasha. And Natasha, uh, apologies, I'm going to paraphrase your question here a little bit. But I, I think the, the question at uh, the crux of this is, is it possible to aggregate and combine data sources from different, uh, different places and, and analyze that as a whole using Heartbeat? Simple answer, yes. Uh, longer answer, we'd really recommend that you do that. In fact, um, we know that single source um, is not always um, the most reliable. It's always better to, to cast your net far and wide to truly track those changes in, in public discourse and customer feedback. So absolutely, yes, um, aggregated data is encouraged. Wonderful. Um, and a, another question here from Felix. Um, so if you were to compare data without date, um, like survey data, for example, what would the heartbeat chart look like? Mm, great question, Felix. Hello, how are you? Hope you're well. Um, the, so heartbeat is reliant on dates. So we do need time series data for it to, to work, for it to function. Um, so it's really recommended for surveys that you run on a um, uh, recurring basis. So whether it's weekly, monthly, yearly, but um, Drop me a note, Felix, and, and we can definitely chat about how we can make it work for you guys. Wonderful. Um, so lots of questions coming through. So keep them coming, folks. We love, we love, all, we love all the interest. Um, next question is about um, the always on component, the, the whole idea of refreshing data. Um, and is there any way that the data upload component of that can be automated to avoid the manual work that's associated with it? Absolutely. Automation is, is high on our list of, of priorities. Um, we do currently have some automated data going into Relative Insight um, from some key customers, um, but we're also we're always open to other um, integrations um, and, 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 and API links with, with your data providers. So yes, in short, again, get in touch with your account manager um, and we can, we can try and make that happen for you guys to make it as seamless as possible. Wonderful. Um, and then another question that we've got a sort of a few versions of this one floating around there today is around what are some of the use cases that you're seeing outside of, of the two that we've talked about here being customer feedback and you know, topical research? Sorry, Dave, say that again. I was, re I was reading one of the questions. Say it again. <laughs> no problem. So what are some of the other use cases that we're seeing aside from customer feedback and, and topical research? Oh, yeah. So um, in short, lots. Um, one of the, a couple of the ex really, really exciting ones. So one of our customers did a tone of voice um, project. So looking at their own use of gendered pronouns. So they wanted to track the use of those across all of their content. Um, it was a big organization, so it was a lot of content um, to make sure that they weren't kind of overly, overly using those um, pronouns. Um, other things that we've seen is kind of impact assessment. So similar to what Jake was discussing earlier around um, initiatives being deployed and then kind of using heartbeat to track the impact of those. You know, are your sales team using the words that you told them to in training or our customers playing back that language that you used in your marketing campaign, for example. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, another question here, a follow up from Natasha is just around if like, can people use data sources that aren't one of the, you know, 300 or so data sources that we have the ability to scrape right now? Can they use their own, own data sources? Yeah, or, or things that in addition to the 300 that we all already have the ability to scrape um, on a sort of open source basis. 
Yeah, absolutely. Any digital text data. Um, yes. Wonderful. And I think, sorry, I was just going to say that that goes for Explore and Heartbeat. Um, you know, one of the great things about Relative Insight is that it can analyze, it's not tied to a specific data source in any way. So whereas you have your social listening tools and your survey tools that only do one data source, you know, we're really designing Relative Insight to be the home for all your text analysis needs across the organization uh, to satisfy sort of all the stakeholder briefs that might come your way. So um, yes, anything with words, as, as Amy mentioned. Now, the, I think we have a couple more here to wrap up with. Uh, and I think the question that is on everybody's mind is how is Heartbeat priced? Mm. So Heartbeat is um, priced based on the number of charts that you need to run concurrently. Um, pricing starts um, at a thousand pounds a month. Um, so uh, if you're interested, get in touch with your account manager um, or myself, my email will be at the end of the, at the end of the slides. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I think we've got through most, all, most of the questions that have come in. So thank you everybody for your interest, your engagement. Um, to wrap things up here today, just first and foremost, a big thank you to Jake uh, for joining us and sharing your plans for using Heartbeat. Uh, you know, it's always great to hear uh, from the front lines, from our customers about, about um, how you plan to, to put all these things to use. So uh, we really appreciate you coming on here uh, and sharing your experience so far um, with the group. Um, we will be doing the draw for the raffle winner. Um, after this session. So you'll hear within the next 24 hours from us if you are the lucky winner of a free year subscription to Heartbeat. And with that, if we have piqued your interest, if this is something that you want to explore in more detail, if you want a sort of a personalized demo tailored to the specific use cases um, that you've encountered, uh, please get in touch with either your account team or Amy uh, Amy can be reached at amy at relativeinsight.com. Really easy to remember that email address. Um, so don't be shy. We'd love to hear from you. And we, we're happy to get on a call to get into uh, the weeds of this with you. Um, so with that, um, we will leave it there for today. Thank you all so much for attending. Uh, you will receive a follow-up recording and some other resources in the next few days. Um, but thank you so much. And, and we hope you're as excited as we are uh, to start using Heartbeat. Uh, thanks, everybody.